Hello, everyone. Welcome to News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I have with me today Joanna Juvelis, who is the senior multimedia journalist for the Belmont Citizen Herald. Joanna, thanks for joining us. Belmont has a missing girl. Can you tell us what's going on? Yes, the Belmont police did post this on their Facebook page that there is a missing teenage girl. Her name is Naya Brown. She is 15 years old and she was seen at 6 p.m. on January 15th. This is not the first time Naya has gone missing. She's been located in the past at, uh, by the MBTA in Boston. She's five foot seven inches tall. She weighs 150 pounds and it is not known what she was wearing. And she did not, does not have her cell phone or her debit card on her. She left them at home. So if anyone has information about Naya, they should call the Belmont Police Department at 617-84-1212 with any information. Okay. Uh, uh, again, we have can a you- have a picture as well that, that will show everybody. Can, can you give us that telephone number one more time? Yes, 617-84-1212. Okay, let's uh, close the door on that. There was really tragic news in Belmont yesterday. There was a fatal hit and run accident. Can you tell us what happened? Yes, so at about 4.20 yesterday, well, today is now January 20th. So on January 19th at about 4.20 p.m., the Belmont received, police received a 911 call from a man that had been struck by a car. The victim is a 35 year old Boston man who was suffering from life threatening injuries. He later died at the hospital. Uh, he was located in the roadway near the driver's side of his vehicle and he was driving a Honda Civic. Apparently what happened was he was struck by a man driving a Dodge. The man is 54 year old Dean Capsalis of Hudson he allegedly fled the scene, but then 30 minutes later, he turned himself in to the Belmont Police Department and told them what happened. The preliminary investigation is suggesting that there was an alleged road raid incident prior to Capsala striking this man. Um, there was a verbal altercation. Both men exited their vehicles and then Capsalis re-entered his vehicle, which was a Dodge Dakota and allegedly struck the victim. Um, his identity has not been released yet. They're notifying his next of, of kin. And uh, Capsalis was arraigned in Cambridge District Court today. The Middlesex DA attorney's office will be giving updates on this case. And so will Wicked Local. We'll, we'll continue to update the case as it develops. It was on Upland Road in Belmont. Upland Road. Which is down by Town Field. It is, yes. Yeah. Okay. And when you, street. when you say it was a hit and run, uh, the person left the scene of the accident, but he did. He left the scene, but it looks like 30 minutes after leaving the scene, he maybe realized what he did or you know, realized the right thing to do was to turn himself in. But all of that is alleged right now you know it's all okay in court now but, um, okay it is unfortunate for the victim thank you for bringing us up to date let's turn to election news in belmont we have a familiar face who it looks like will we join do. the school committee race yes i'm following i'm following um the town clerk's office very closely to see if anyone new has pulled papers to run for a townwide office. And school committee is becoming a very popular question. There are already three candidates who have, um, well, to file their nomination papers, Megan Moriarty and Jamal Sae, Tara Donner. Uh, actually, Tara Donner also files her papers. So there are three official candidates for, and it is officially a race for two seats. On, on January 19th, Timothy Flood, who is not new to the local election scene, I'll, I'll fill you in on that, he pulled papers to
to run for school committee. He hasn't filed, he just pulled. So this means there is potentially a fourth candidate running for two school committee seats. And Tim Flood ran for select board in 2019 against Roy Epstein, who became our select board chairman now, and Jesse Bennett. So he was a newcomer running against two other newcomers and he came in third in that, in that election in 2019. Since then, he hasn't just been sitting around doing nothing. Um, he is the chair, he became the chairman of the Belmont uh, Special Education Parent Advisory Committee. He also is on the Age Friendly Advisory Committee and he's a town meeting member. And he's often seen and heard at school committee and select board meetings. Now, to explain to people uh, and to make sure that the vernacular isn't confusing, we talk about people pulling papers and people filing papers. Can yes. you explain the difference there? Sure. When you pull papers, it means you intend to run for a position and you have to collect signatures. And if it's a townwide office, you need at least 50 signatures and they need to be turned in by February 16th. That is the deadline to file your nomination papers. And once you file those papers with signatures, they recommend getting a lot of extra signatures because the town clerk's office has to verify that everybody who signed is a Belmont resident. So there are three people now who have become candidates by filing their signatures and Tim Flood is in the process of collecting signatures to be filed. That is correct, yes. Okay. Joanna, so, so that's the update on the school committee. Uh, it looks like Belmont's going to have another contested race uh, this spring. The Housing Authority looks like it will have uh, multiple candidates. Yes, so we, we do have a, a race for Housing Authority, th potentially. Three candidates have filed nomination papers and there are two seats. There's one four-year seat and there's one five-year seat. Ann Mann plans for re-election to her five-year seat. She's served for the past five years. She's a local realtor in town. Tommy Olson has not said what seat she is running for. It'll either be the four-year seat or the five-year seat. And she actually ran for Housing Authority in 2019 and lost to newcomer Sandra Page. She had served three years. She was filling a vacancy and served for three years. And then she was running for election to the five-year seat, which she lost to Cassandra Page, who was a newcomer, also a tenant, and she uh, got the seat. There's, there's one other candidate, newcomer Sarah Billado. She does plan to run for the four-year So we have a four-year seat candidate, and she's a very active community member, parent in town, Sarah Billado. Um, she, she's, a she's actually not a town meeting member, but she's also running for town meeting. And so we, so, so we don't know if there'll be a race for the four-year seat or the five-year seat, there will, but there will be, depending on what Tommy Olson decides. So unlike last year when there were no contested races, it looks like there will be at least two this year. Yes, it's getting very interesting. <laughs> Let's talk about the fire chief, uh, Belmont's longtime fire chief, retired last summer, and David the, Frizzell, select board, the select board has been doing a search for the new chief. There is uh, uh, a new development now. Yes. So there's, there's a screening committee that's been working since the summer, um, along with an outside uh, consulting agency, an outside recruiting agency. And they actually, they had 21 applicants all together for the Belmont Fire Chief position and started down to six. And now it is narrowed down to three. There are three finalists. They will be publicly interviewed Thursday, January 21st, beginning at 6 p.m. And the three finalists are Acting Chief Wayne Haley. Wayne uh, grew up in Belmont. And he has been with the Belmont Fire Department since 1997. He worked his way up through the ranks to assistant chief in 2017. And then when David Frizzell retired, he was appointed as the acting chief. The other two candidates are actually from out of state. James 
Heplau is a battalion chief in Waterbury, Connecticut, Spire Department. And the other candidate, the other finalist is David DiStefano. He's also a battalion chief of North Providence, Rhode Island's Fire Department. So we have two out of state candidates and one internal candidate, and they will be publicly interviewed Thursday, January 21st, starting at 6 p.m. And it is possible that the select board will vote. They're being publicly interviewed by the select board. And it, it is possible select board will vote on their choice this Thursday evening, January 21st. You said that David DiStefano is one of the, uh, the three finalists for the fire chief. Uh, is he any relationship to the DiStefano brothers who are developers here in Belmont? No, he is not. And his last name is spelled differently. It's spelled D-E-S-T-A-F-A-N-O. And to follow up on a comment you, you just made to make clear to folks, when we say a public interview, that means that the interview can be watched by the public. It's okay. not that the, the public can participate in the interviews. No. The, inter yes, the interview process itself is by the select board. Right, right. And you can watch it virtually. And the Belmont Media Center. <laughs> And the significance is that the select board is moving closer and closer to hiring a new fire chief for the town of Belmont. Yes. That's great. Thanks for bringing us up to date. We have cool. been speaking with Joanna Juvelis, who is the senior multimedia journalist for the Belmont Citizen Herald. You can read about these stories and more in, online and in print in the Belmont Citizen Herald. You've been watching News Now, the Belmont Journal's daily update on what's going on in the community of Belmont. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I'll talk with you again next time.